Hello YouTube and welcome to What The Math. In today's video I decided to take a look at four absolutely free pieces of software or I guess you could call them in some sense games that allow you to explore the universe and also learn a little bit more about space exploration, astronomy, astrophysics and so on and so forth. All four of these programs I'm going to be talking about are available on Windows and a few of them are available on Mac. And the tools I'm going to be presenting you today are great for classrooms, great for teachers, great for students, or great for anyone who's in love with space and wants to learn more about it. Now, of course, we're going to start with my favorite space engine. This is actually a one-person project developed by, I believe his name is Vladimir Romanyuk, uh, Russian astronomer slash programmer slash, I guess, a space enthusiast who developed this amazing space simulation. It allows you to explore everything in our universe, every single object in our solar system is available to us. So I can actually go to any planet, like for example, I can, I can go to Mars and just go to it and land on it if I wanted to. And obviously this is probably the best tool available to us today for exploring a very awesome, uh, somewhat procedurally generated universe where you can not only go to different planets and different stars, but you can actually completely escape our galaxy. And I'm going to do that right now. And you can then essentially try to explore other galaxies and uh, even reach the end of our universe. Uh, so this is a, an absolute amazing tool for that. Uh, I mean, this is as good as it gets, but unfortunately it's not available on Mac and is only still being developed for Linux. So this is a truly Windows system. So if you're not, if you're school or if you are not a Windows user, you're kind of out of luck here because unfortunately you will not be able to use this tool. And for this reason, I decided to also talk about the next tool that I'm going to show you in a second as soon as I reach the end of the universe. Um, and that tool is so, sort of what, um, Space Engine is based on. From what I understand, uh, Vladimir Romanuk actually was working on that f other project that I'm about to show you before he came into Space Engine and before he actually developed this. Okay, so we're flying through the universe, but we're not reaching the end yet. And I'm already flying at like 326 uh, million light years per second. All right, so that's going to take us a while to reach the end of the universe. We might not be able to get to it. Uh, but anyway, so let's take a look at the next two. And you can obviously do this by yourself when you're playing around with Space Engine. And this is what the website looks like. You can actually download the uh, uh, beta version. I believe it's uh, 0 0.9, 0 0.7, 0 0.3. That's the latest one. Um, and if you want to donate, and actually I do, I do recommend doing this, uh, all of the money basically supports the development of this project. And I think it's a pretty awesome project because it is probably the best we have. Anyway, so that's Space Engine. And what started that project was, of course, Celestia. Celestia has been around since 2001, and this is yet another absolutely free, uh, free to use uh, space simulation that has a very similar sort of approach, uh, but uh, it's a lot less complex than Space Engine. It doesn't have music, it doesn't really have uh, beautiful graphics, and it's more uh, sort of based on sort of just a simple and quite realistic approach. Now here, we have something called a tour guide, which kind of is great because it it already kind of teaches you a little bit about different planets, different stars, and different um, things around our our galaxy. Like for example, it, uh, you can go into something called Comet Borelli, and it talks about Comet Borelli, briefly explains it to you, and then you can actually go to it and explore it visually. Now this tool is fortunately available for Mac. So if you are uh, working for a, a Mac school or if you're just a Mac user yourself, uh, you may want to consider getting this because I mean, obviously it's free. And look at this beautiful comet. There's even a comet tail here that it generates. Uh, so obviously it's free, but at the same time, it's also, it doesn't have as much processing power requirements as Space Engine because Space Engine is a lot more demanding on your CPU and your graphics card. And also this sort of is a lot simpler, which might be better for someone who's just starting with these types of simulations. Now let's actually go back to the tour guide and choose Jupiter this time and look at the uh, great spot, red spot of Jupiter. And all of the objects uh, that are present in this simulation are actually um, available from the same sort of database as used in Space Engine. So in that sense, they're actually quite similar. And really the main difference between Space Engine and Celestia, other than the fact that Celestia is available on the Mac, is that um, Space Engine is continuously being developed and is actually updated regularly, whereas uh, Celestia, unfortunately, is no longer updated. Since 2011, I think they stopped updating it, uh, and so this is pretty much the final version of this particular simulation. But nevertheless, I think this is pretty awesome, especially for those of you who are Mac users. Anyway, let's go to the next one. 
Oh, and I forgot to mention, this is what Celestia website looks like, and you can just go in here and download and download the version for yourself. So there's Windows, Mac, and also Linux versions. Well, even source code is available, so because this is all open source software. And the next uh, software I'm going to be showing you is unfortunately also only for Windows, and this is called Worldwide Telescope. Um, Worldwide Telescope is actually uh, developed by Microsoft, and it's essentially what it sounds like. It's uh, it's a very very complicated telescope that allows you to look at different objects in space, and sort of allows you to explore um, all of the constellations, all of the stars around us, as if you were uh, basically playing around with. Uh, a sort of a virtual telescope. So for example, if I wanted to go to Mars, I can click on Mars right now, and you'll see that I'm slowly approaching Mars, but I can also just select a certain object on Mars to, to kind of look at. So I'm gonna zoom in to Mars right now, and here we go. So this is Mars, and interestingly, ooh, too much, too much. Here we go. And interestingly, this is actually based on the actual data from various satellites, and you'll see that it's actually constantly being updated because it also downloads a lot of data from the internet. And so a lot of these are actual photos of Martian surface. So this is literally like as if you were looking with an actual telescope on the surface of Mars. Now here, there's a lot of things you can explore. You can obviously try to find the location of uh, several probes that we landed on Mars, or you can try to find the infamous face on Mars. And despite all of this clunky UI that you see here, you can actually remove most of these things so that they're not visible to you anymore. And if, you, if you're if you watching this in full screen or if you're using this in full screen, it actually doesn't look as bad. So you can actually remove all of this. So all of these tabs and all of these other bars can be removed if, if, they, if you don't like them. And you can even use Xbox controller to control your um, sort of your motions and your movements in this particular simulation. But what I really like about this is that it's it has so many built-in tours. So for example, if you're just trying to learn something about our solar system or you know our galaxy or universe in general, you can go into guided tours right here. And there's a bunch of things, including sort of the videos that are already added into this, uh, where you'll hear someone talk about a, uh, a certain topic, and they'll also explain it to you in quite a lot of detail and show you various things um, using this particular simulation as well. So it's actually a pretty awesome way of learning about essentially our universe once again, because it doesn't just have um, one solar system, it actually has, look at how much it has already. It, uh, it has our galaxy and of course it has all of the other galaxies that we already mapped out and you can kind of see how much we know about our universe and this is sort of the cone that it shows you. So we have no idea what's in here but we know almost everything about this part right here. And which is I think is a pretty awesome simulation of um, you know how much we know about astronomy and um, various solar objects in space that you know we see around us. So Worldwide Telescope is actually probably one of the more complex tools that are available absolutely for free, especially for learning. So if you are using um, Windows, because this is unfortunately only for, for Windows since it's Microsoft, and of course, if you're super interested in things like space, uh, planetary explorations, and all kinds of various uh, topics on astronomy and uh, astrophysics, then you may want to consider getting this because uh, you can basically go to every planet and just take a look at it and learn a little bit ab about it by going into guided tour and then possibly finding the topic that interests you and then uh, playing the video and learning uh, about it that way. And let's actually look up uh, something. Let's, I wanted to see if I can find the face on Mars, but unfortunately I couldn't do it manually. So let's let's try to find it uh, by using this here. And I think this is it. So I'm gonna go to it right now, and let's see what we discover here. And is that it? Here we go. So if I were to zoom into it now, I would see the infamous face of Mars. Uh, this is in the region called Cydonia. And there you go. Look at that. Perfect. So this is the picture that. Uh, NASA took a long time ago and people thought it looked like a face and now we know that it's most likely to be some sort of a hill that just had just the right sort of shadow that created these little two eyes and a little mouth right here. Anyway, so this is a simulation called World Wild Telescope and I think it's definitely worth checking out because it is probably one of the better tools to teach you a little bit more about space, universe and so on and so forth. And the website is right here, it's available in the description below it. And you can download version 5.2 and hopefully they'll update it later on. And this is actually actively being updated as well, so uh, you can always come back and try to uh, download a new version.
And the last one I wanted to take a look at, Orbiter 2010 Space Flight Simulator. Now, this is actually uh, just like what it sounds. It's a space flight simulator, but it's very, very realistic. Unlike Kerbal Space Program or unlike other space simulators, this one takes it or takes the realism to a completely new level where everything is just as it should be in terms of physics and so on and so forth. There's also a lot of simulations that you can download online because a lot of them have been um, created by the fans of this simulation, but I'm just going to show you one of them. So we, we can go to uh, various uh, folders here. Just uh, You'll see that there's a lot of different missions you can choose from. Um, I want to try something a little bit different this time. I'm going to go into Delta Glider here, and there's actually quite a lot of different simulations you can choose. But I want to choose this one here called, uh, called uh, Venus Descent. So this is when a glider is descending um, toward Venus, and you'll see what it looks like in a second. And all right, here we go. So we find ourselves in a spacecraft right above Venus. This is sort of what it looks like. You can kind of rotate the view around you. And uh, essentially, this is uh, super realistic. It has um, very realistic Newtonian physics. Uh, you have fuel consumption. You have things like uh, drag and pressure and temperature and so on and so forth. And our goal here is to try to land on Venus very, very gently. Uh, now, because this is a very realistic simulation, you'll have um, very realistic panels here as well. Uh, there's actually, this is really complex and it does take a few hours to learn how to use. And I'm still myself quite a beginner in this, but you can actually um, even use uh, these, all of these buttons and all of these panels at, like an actual astronaut by just clicking on them. So uh, if you play through some of these simulations, you can actually just directly uh, press the buttons if you know what you're doing that is I have no idea what I'm doing so I'm not gonna do that but I need to actually try to slow down uh, there we go I need to aim toward the retrograde which I'm gonna do uh, hopefully automatically and then we're going to blast our engines um, and slow down and try to get into v um, Eve's at not Eve what am I talking about this is Kerbal, this is not a Kerbal space program it's not Eve uh, into Venus's atmosphere uh, now, this is about 280 kilometers above um, Venus. So this is uh, the upper atmosphere of Venus. And so once you get into retrograde position, you can actually blast these engines. And there we go. Hopefully this will slow us down enough so we can start falling down into the atmosphere. I may want to actually watch the fuel here. But um, so, oh, run button, run button. This is, uh, this is showing various objects in space. Here we go. So the speed right now is shown right here, and it's uh, 6,700 meters per second. And I think this is more than enough. And basically now we're falling into the atmosphere of Venus. And so what you can do in this particular game is explore all of these different simulations and all of these really, really, really cool scenarios. Some of them are realistic, some of them are um, based on some kind of a science fiction thing. Uh, like, for example, there's even uh, scenarios for first man in space, uh, the first man on the moon, and so on and so forth. And you have to try to do it manually as well, which is actually pretty awesome. So this kind of gives you an idea of how difficult some of these missions were and how difficult it is to do anything in space. It's Actually, most of these simulations will make you really struggle and suffer and sweat and so on and so forth. But all in all, this is actually absolutely awesome for a completely free and also, oh yeah, I forgot to mention, you can also change your face. You can actually make this your own face, which is pretty cool. Um, uh, so all in all, this is a pretty awesome uh, free simulation or free software or open source software that's continuously being developed. There's actually a very large community that always introduces new scenarios. For example, here's a scenario that sort of simulates, um, I believe this is from 2001 Space Odyssey, or possibly something similar to it, where you, you have this little spaceship that tries to land, uh, not to land, sorry, to dock with, um, what is this, some sort of a space station. So let's see if we can do it, but we probably can't. I'm probably going to crash because I'm going too fast. Uh, so all in all, this is a pretty amazing, um, I think it's a pretty amazing simulation. Uh, for a free software, you probably won't find anything better. And uh, it does teach you quite a lot about the space program. It teaches you a lot of th things about, uh, oh boy, what's going to happen? Are we going to crash? Probably. Um, about uh, you know how to how to approach everything from uh, from the takeoff to a docking to landing and so on and so forth, and oh my God, I did it! Wow, that was pretty good. I'm very proud of myself right now. So there we go. We just actually docked with the station uh, that's right next to the moon. And this is a pretty cool achievement for myself, even though I didn't really do much because this was a pretty easy simulation. So there's a lot of these uh, scenarios and you can definitely take a look at them and they will teach you a lot about uh, space and universe 
space exploration and various missions from NASA, ESA and uh, Russian uh, space agency as well. And this is the website for Orbiter 2010, so you can actually download this from right here. And unfortunately, this is also only available for Windows, but if you do use Windows and you love space, you definitely need to try this. Anyway, so this is all I wanted to show, and thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed these four little free simulators that I showed you in this video. And if you did, like this video, and if you haven't subscribed yet, subscribe, because there's more space videos coming in the future. And if you're a teacher and you like using various simulations and various um, programs in class, take a look at this list right here that shows you various educational video games that I've reviewed in the past. Thank you for watching and game you later, guys. Bye-bye.